What's up, SVSers? Nick here, back with another SVS audio file happy hour. And of course, we're joined by our normal crew. Uh, that includes President Gary Yakubian. Gary, how's it going this evening? I'm living the dream. I, th I think it's been fun. Uh, uh, the, the world is opening up, but we were still looking forward to our virtual uh, happy hour, which I think means to me, and I think the other three of us agree, um, we're going to keep doing these, even though I think uh, we're emerging from uh, pandemic. So really looking forward to this hour with everybody, and especially to the lightning round. Oh, the lightning round. That's right. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's not jump ahead too much here. And of I'm course, sorry. we have our uh, national training manager, the Larry Magoo. Larry, how are you this evening? I am great, sir. I'm uh, having some fun here and uh, looking forward to this and geeking out with everybody and uh, just ready for some new stuff. Yes. And uh, our special guest, who is uh, the most special guest we have, because we have him on pretty much every other episode, but he is a legend in the world of SVS in our community. That would be our director of technology, Mr. Ed Mullen. Ed, how are you this evening? I'm doing great, Nick. Uh, it's been a fantastic spring and summer here. As Gary said, things are starting to open up. Everybody's getting vaccinated and, and life's getting back to normal. So uh, we can say all four of us are vaccinated, right? Yep. Yep, you certainly are. And uh, this is a, a little bit of a special evening tonight. For one, you might notice the backdrop. And as much as I wish this was my house, I'm actually uh, live in Youngstown, Ohio, in our headquarters. This is a new little studio room we built for uh, for testing and, and doing some demos. And I'll do a quick little spin around it. You see this uh, nice system we have set up here uh, with a couple of our PB16 Ultra subwoofers, the Prime Pinnacle, the Ultra Tower. And we have a nice little two channel system. And there's uh, my compatriot Eli working behind the scenes, helping gather Hi, some Eli. of your questions. In case everyone was wondering what Eli looks like, you guys That's know right. Eli. There's your sneak <laughs> peek at- uh, Try not to be too disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> it's casual Thursday in the office. That is right. It is a, a bit casual here. It's also about 82 degrees. So I, I don't hate him on for the, the shorts wearing that. 85 here. Keep so waiting. anyone who might be joining us for the very first time, uh, we'll talk about what we're going to get into later today. But we do giveaways. Uh, we have four giveaways this evening. And basically, to be eligible, all you have to do is leave a comment. We have uh, my other colleague, Vince, working behind the scenes. He'll be choosing people at random to... Uh, be the winners of these awesome prizes. And, uh, you know, other than that, we'll, we'll dive into the, some of the topics. But Larry, what are the giveaways for this evening? Oh, so the, we've got four as usual. Uh, the first one we're going to, are these in order? We, I don't know. So you may have changed them, but we've got a prime wireless sound base amplifier we're going to be giving away, a pair of prime elevation speakers, a PB1000 Pro subwoofer, and an SB2000 <laughs> Pro subwoofer. So we've got four great giveaways for you all. And uh, all you got to do is comment, ask a question, and you can have a chance to win. That's right. A and minimum a minimum of four giveaways. You've also got the random giveaways, right, for the am – I'm allowed to say that, right? Well, we already have picked Brian those trouble. We No, no, you're not in trouble, but we've already picked those people <laughs> and contacted them. So there is no mystery behind who they are. We will announce them and show uh, some of our SVS in the wild pictures, and we'll frame up that here in a little bit. But those winners have been chosen. So <clears throat> unless you're planning on another surprise giveaway, Gary, we're going to have uh, our, our locked-in four – for today so just listen for your name when i call it out during the giveaways we'll give a little heads up and uh like i said we'll reach out and take care of you so uh with that being said we'll start as we always do and, and ed i'm going to start with you this evening because i want to know what is in your glass and what have you been listening to recently i am still nursing uh the iris 21 uh from my good friend rich hunt down in uh florida uh and uh that bottle is damn near gone uh, but <laughs> it Considering it's 21-year-old Irish, I'm, I've been nursing and it's fantastic. Uh, we are binging, if you want to call it that, with one episode a night, maybe two, uh, the late, season four of Castlevania. Uh, okay. And uh, really enjoying that. And my son likes it too. So that, that's, what, that's what's been occupying our time lately. And Larry, what uh, interesting concoction do you have in your glass and what have you been listening to? Well, you guys know I like to go get my cherry Coke on uh, broadcast days, but we're having some work done on the house, so I didn't get to get out. So I just have my normal golf and stuff uh, cup here. And oh, I didn't realize. And I'm wearing a, a shirt from Cobra Kai. It's a uh, cherry pie. <laughs> so I guess that's a good, uh, good combo there. Um, and then watching wise, I don't know if we're doing that too, but I finally got around to watching Mortal Kombat and that was fun. Um, I really not good as most. You of really like that thought provoking content, like oh man, like it was not and... good. Oh, it it was not, you know, and none of them have been. But uh, <laughs> the fight scenes were cool. There you uh, go. I'll, I'll get that. with that. That's Lots all I want. Cool. I just want to smile for two hours, you know. Yep. 
And uh, and Gary, what are you into uh, this uh, this week and since the last broadcast we had? You know, I have to say I'm I'm not too inspiring. Other than I've been doing a lot of two channel, I've really been enjoying my uh, my my system, uh, my main system, uh, which is based around a, a Lynn uh, turntable, and been playing a lot of jazz. And um, I love the Bob Dylan uh, um, latest uh, uh, disc of his, um, which I play in vinyl. I'm just enjoying the heck out of that. But as far as uh, uh, TV content, uh, you know, we have uh, two um, the uh, sports teams in D.C. actually in the playoffs, at least for now. And it's been fun, especially watching the Capitals Bruins series, which have been three, the only three games in all three games went to overtime, even though the Caps are losing. It's been a lot of fun to watch. I've been tuning in as well. So uh, that has been a phenomenal series. Lots of action and uh, crisp play. So I'm, I'm totally into the hockey playoffs, as I am every year. Um, but aside from that, it uh, looks like you got your normal crystal light there. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, and I, I'll, I'll spike it with vodka one of these days. But <laughs> we, we'd never know. Not, not tonight. Well, this was, this was about to be my very first broadcast without having uh, any happy hour concoction, but uh, Eli saved the day and found a, a Corona seltzer here floating around the office. I'm not sure who it is. I don't want to get any trouble. Who <laughs> I know. What are they attention. doing with that, Nick? I'm saying. I need you to track down who's, who's that is. Yeah, you know, trying to pull it off as regular seltzer, but uh, it did save the day for me today. Um, and as far as uh, things that I've been uh, checking out recently, I did uh, Amazon would not let me ignore without remorse. That, uh, that action movie. And I did have a little bit of remorse about the plot line because it was pretty <laughs> holy, full of holes, I should say. Uh, but lots of great action, lots of intense, you know, surround sound action. So I will say it's a, a good uh, workout for your system, but I wouldn't say, uh, you know, look for any thought provoking uh, dialogue or, or things like that from it. I also have been into the Black Keys new album, Delta Cream. They're basically doing a bunch of cover of old Mississippi and uh, Southern um, blues songs, which I've always liked the Black Keys, but this is a little bit of a different take for them. So uh, I've been really enjoying that on my flight out here. And then the final thing I wanted to call out was uh, this is a, uh, a playlist that was put together by one of our former guests, uh, Brent Butterworth, who's uh, sort of an icon in the media world. Mm -hmm. He did a great uh, you know, selection of songs with jazz music to uh, test your stereo with. And he gives a good explanation for what to listen for. So I put the link up here. We'll share it in the comments as well. But if you're looking to get into jazz or you've never even really thought about getting into jazz, that uh, then this would be a, a good place to start with uh, from this little playlist here. So I do have something. I just thought of uh, something that I did discover uh, a couple of days ago, which I'm really enjoying, which was actually turned on to me by my youngest son. Um, it's uh, the new uh, J. Cole um, album, which... Normally that wouldn't be, that's a kind of edgy rap. It wouldn't be the first thing I would uh, um, pick up, but it's actually super listenable. I would say it's actually a really good entry point into a rap and hip hop for someone who's not totally familiar. It's really good. Well, I think and I think he just made his pro basketball debut this week too. So uh, he's who's got that? a lot Who did? I'm on. sorry. Jake Cole. So he's a, uh, he's a basketball guy and playing are they related? The basketball are you... league, I think. <laughs> huh. Well, I know Vince is going to be very happy to hear you say that. Cause he's been blasting the, uh, the J Cole and his new, uh, his ultra tower speaker. So is that true? Um, yes. So Vince is good. probably it's, it's uh, really good. Behind very scenes. listenable. Uh, so before we get into our lightning round Q and a, we did want to have a couple little, uh, conversations here about, uh, some things that are going on in the world, but the first one, uh, and you'll have to bear with me here. We did a, a little bit of a, a fun exercise to show off the augmented reality technology that's on our website. And basically, uh, what we asked people to do was, uh, create various screenshots with their phone using the AR technology, which allows you to see basically the size of our products uh, within your home and within your system and how they match up with your decor. Uh, that's the practical use for it. But we asked uh, the folks to have some fun and, uh, you know, put, put the pictures. I'm in just curious from the comments uh, before you do this, I, I, I'm yeah. watching the comments. I'm just curious from the comments, by the way, we're going to do the lightning round. Did we say this um, that, you know, people can be asking questions now and Eli is catching them in real time to make sure that we see them. So we'll, we'll, soon, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll, yeah, so you can feel free to start here. peppering us with questions right now. That's right. Um, yeah. Thank you for reminding me, Gary, because uh, that is true. Uh, Eli, that is his role right here. He is uh, working studiously, pulling questions. So we're going to you know, go through those as soon as we get through a couple little topics here. Uh, but absolutely, uh, ask those questions now and we'll pull as many as we can. And we're going to move in rapid fire fashion to get through as many as we possibly can. 
So with that said, uh, we had a little fun with our uh, AR technology, as I was saying, uh, and we called it. Uh, oh, I, I, Nick, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm, you're going to kill me. I know. No, I'm not. I was just hoping also in the comments, how many people have actually used the uh, augmented reality feature on our site? Has anyone seen it? It's really cool. We're wondering how many people are seeing it and using it. It's, it was, we actually went to a lot of uh, engineering and, and um, investment to try to bring that to people so they can see what speakers and subwoofers look like in their living space. And it literally, all you got to do is kind of aim it at your living space. It automatically sizes the speaker or subwoofer so you can see if it fits and how it'll look in your room. I'm just curious if people are using it. So I'm looking at the comments to see what what people uh, say. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I mean, when you're you're looking at a PB16 Ultra, for instance, it's good to know that that's going to fit next to your entertainment center, and so uh, the AR technology, you know, scales it to size and gives you that that sensation of uh, you know understanding how it's going to look and how big it is compared to your uh, other components and, and furniture. So, um, or in the back of your truck, or in the back of your truck, or as we'll see in a lot of other places here when we have some fun. So this is uh, what we were calling uh, SVS in the wild, and if you'll bear with me for just a second here while I get this slideshow up. Uh, this is uh, basically uh, some of the selection of uh, entries. And these first four were actually the winners of the contest. We chose people at random. We like to give everyone a fair chance. Uh, so with that being said, our, our first winner here was uh, Anthony B. And it looks like he took, uh, I guess that's a PB3000 perhaps down to a, a concert venue. Uh, so that was our <laughs> first winner there. Uh, next, Good idea. Uh, yeah. He's getting us into the oh, pro space, oh, even if it's only right. virtual. So uh, next we have, uh, this one looks more like to be a, a like truly SVS in the wild. And this was uh, from our uh, Brian Glenn from Instagram, who's uh, at Cigar Obsession. <laughs> this next one here is uh, more of a, you know, in the yard type pick. This came also from Instagram from uh, Grayson Tuttle, at Grayson underscore Tuttle one. And then our final winner, uh, and I know I'm not saying the prizes here, but, uh, you know, uh, I think that's okay. These guys have already been reached out to and we're taking care of them. The final one here uh, added a little bit of production value to it. It looks like we have a SP 1000 pro there and uh, you know, in the bathtub scene. So having some fun there uh, you know, out in the, uh, in the tub. So uh, moving right along, I'm just going to go through these. And, and okay, I'm impressed with that. Yeah. I'm going to go through these. And uh, if you guys have any uh, witty comments to make, feel free to add them on, but uh, we'll just kind of pressure on here and not spend too, too much time before we do our first giveaway. So, uh, yeah, this one looks like uh, <laughs> I'm just hey. going to move through unless you guys have something. We do have those for, photos. For a lonely SBS Instagram. community yeah. member. <laughs> so you can see you can play with the scale as well, <laughs> make them smaller or bigger. Uh, you know, ah, that's my favorite so far. And those are not newts. What are they called, Eli? Quetzalcoatls, those little lizards? I don't know. Okay, there you looks go. It's like a transformer uh, to me. That's a Hulk Iron Man. That's a Hulk Buster, yeah. You have an astronaut pick there. This one's at the dentist office. So somebody uh, had the foresight to uh, have some fun waiting for the dentist. This one would certainly make the neighbors happy, you know, having it on the front lawn there. This uh, few people took the chance of putting it next to their uh, significant other, but there was one. <laughs> you go pumping some iron with the SB3000. She looks really happy about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Taking a dip here, running to some laps there in the pool. Uh, some more production value for you. Nice. <laughs> in the oven. Oh, that's kind of cool. I'm not sure what's going now, on. There's a massive piece of machinery. I'm not sure where this person works, but that's pretty cool. There's the hovering over the cap. Ooh, that's kind of like uh, in the Road hot Runner and Wiley Coyote about to drop the anvil down on the cat. Huh? Taking another float in the pool there. The micro enjoying a uh, playground session. We're almost done, Gary. Don't worry. Here we go. I'm, I'm, this one here. No, you were fine. I'm just scratching my head here. But these Here's are the dishwasher. Uh, you know, why not replace the dishwasher with a subwoofer? And I think we're we're getting towards the end here. And there we is with the sidewalk next to a bike. And <laughs> back to the beginning. So there you go. So what we're actually going to do is uh, I'll take this off now. All um, wins, actually. in my opinion. We're going to put a whole slideshow of all the submissions because that was just a, a handful of some of the ones that we thought were really fun. But there's a lot more there. Some people actually used it as it's intended to, which, you know, putting it in a, uh, you know, an actual home theater setting. But uh, I love what you guys did with SVS in the wild. Thank you so much for uh 
making that as fun as it was. And uh, we'll we'll do something else similar to that here down down the line here in the uh, the future. And but uh, again, I actually see the person commenting that that was their cat too. So awesome, they're here there watching. Well. Um, with so us. with that being said, I think we're probably ready for our first giveaway before we have uh, one more thing to talk about here. And uh, as Larry alluded to at the beginning, uh, we are giving away a Prime wireless sound base, 300 watt two channel amplifier, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabled all the connections you need to power everything in your system. And our winner of the Prime Wireless Sound Base is Randy Hyde. Randy Hyde, congratulations. Awesome. Mr. Vince will reach out to you behind the scenes and make sure we get your information and ship that out. So there was a, an interesting news announcement this week that came out that uh, I thought would be interesting because I always see people asking about Dolby Atmos and music and, and whatnot. And basically the announcement was that Apple Music is now gonna support Dolby Atmos and high resolution. So Gary, I wanted to get your take on this sort of uh, first and then kick around some of what we've heard about this and, and what we think the implications are for the future of audio. Well, you know, the first high resolution uh, streaming service was Tidal, um, uh, which made a big splash, you know, and was was uh, purchased by uh, Jay-Z's company. And and, uh, and now we have Cobuzz, which we, we're huge fans of Cobuzz. And uh, Amazon Music and now Apple Music. And Spotify actually announced it, and then it seemed like they didn't follow through. It looks like we're getting that echo again, Nick, just FYI. Um, it, um, but actually, I saw uh, on a thread that Spotify, somebody found a phantom button for it on their Spotify app or, or somewhere. And, and so it looks like it's imminent with Spotify. Uh, I don't have inside information about that, but uh, they've certainly announced it. So. To me, this is fantastic news. Everybody knows that the uh, lowest common denominator of uh, streaming music is is uh, not optimal. It's not it's not as good as a CD. It's not even close to as good as a CD. And now we're talking about beyond well beyond CD quality. Uh, you guys know that our Prime Wireless uh, series of products can support full high resolution, and there are of course other products of other audio brands that can. And we're all for the best sound possible. So I couldn't be happier about this. Um, Larry, you, I, know, I know you feel this way as well. Yeah, I'm excited for any time there's more content out there to listen to. And I, I think this will be driven by most of us that own Apple TV products so that you can listen to them in Atmos uh, through your systems and stuff. So it's going to be nice to have some new stuff. And I know we've had uh, guests come on that have been working with Atmos Audio. So we had Rory Hershkovitz earlier uh, in one of our broadcasts, and he talked about what he went through to make Atmos content. So I'm, I'm stoked for it. Um, I don't listen to a ton of Atmos music outside of concert discs, but when I do, I, I go down and I enjoy it in the living room. So you guys still hearing the echo? I just want to make nope, sure. It's gone. No, it's okay. gone. it went away, whatever you did. All right, cool. Um, you know, the thing that's interesting to me, and I'm not sure if from a hardware perspective, uh, Ed, maybe you can answer this question. I mean, it's only going to be for headphones right now. Is there any sort of special requirements you need from your headphones in order to take advantage of this? No, I don't think so. Uh, a conventional headphones will work fine. It's really just in the mix. And one of the interesting things that I was reading about this, uh, so, you know, part of the technology, at least with the uh, Air, Air Pro Maxes is they're going to have like gyroscopes in them. So if you turn your head like this, then the sound will actually alternate depending on which way you're facing and adjust based on that, which I thought was really cool. Uh, not all headphones obviously will have that technology in them, but certainly like you guys said, the implications for uh, for immersive listening and getting people more in tune to this kind of thing, it's only going to be good for uh, I think home theater and people wanting to adopt these kind of systems at their home. So it's not only a private listening session with your headphones. You can now bring this and it gets them more interested and sort of start people down that road so um, I also they, think it's a really big uh, announcement on Apple's part um, I don't want to be uh, come at it from a negative place but I don't think Apple has been fully invested in the best possible sound in their ecosystem and now I see um, Apple TV fully supports Dolby Atmos I have a brand new Apple TV 4k the brand new one that just started shipping coming tomorrow it does a lot of cool things, supports the full uh, uh, 4K um, uh, array of, of, uh, of picture enhancements as well. And um, their headphones and their Bluetooth connectivity, they've never fully embraced high resolution transmission. So to me that they're making this announcement, they're sort of finally signing on for enjoying 
music, uh, two channel content and home theater content in its full, uh, to its full potential and to the uh, faithfulness to the, to the ultimate uh, 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 quality of the content. So this, since more than half of us own iPhones or iOS uh, products, it's a huge moment for yeah. great sound. Love that. Yep. I think it's very well said. And, uh, you know, I, I'd love to hear in the comments of people once they start ex uh, experiencing it, but we're going to look to try to get a guest on who can really speak to this in terms of the uh, mixing and mastering process. Um, and, uh, you know, really dive into this because I agree with you, Gary, this is big news and it's something that's going to keep sort of snowballing, I think with other content providers as they add on more, uh, more types of, uh, content like this. Um, so one and, more and so I see a comment here that, uh, that Apple has spatial audio. That, yes, you're right. They have spatial audio. That is actually different than the Dolby Atmos that Nick is talking about. Um, uh, I think the spatial audio, if you have Apple headphones, I have the AirPod uh, Max and, uh, and Pros, and it does work. It's kind of cool. It doesn't work as well with some content as others, but I definitely recommend spatial audio and here's my latest tip if you have apple headphones there's nothing to do with sbs turn off the uh noise cancellation if you're in a place where you can do that um, because the spatial audio works a lot better without it good to know hey there you go rock solid tip there from Gary. first tip first there tip of the night <laughs> first tip you came from a question so we have one more topic we want to dive into and i think this one will go pretty quick but it has us all super excited i know gary probably more so than anyone because he's already bought into this but Live music is coming back. I mean, how great is that? It's been over a year since I've seen a concert. I know uh, most of you guys probably haven't been out of the house to a concert here in, in uh, you know, quite a while. And I know uh, Live Nation has, uh, you know, basically signed on to do live streaming of concerts. So before we get into what shows we're going to see in person, I'm curious to go around here, and I'll start with you, Ed. Would you pay to live stream a concert? And if so, who would you pay to live stream? No, I wouldn't. I, I think a concert is best experienced in person. It's a totally different vibe and different level of energy. Um, so I'm I'm all for in-person attendance and looking forward to getting back out to concerts. Larry? I think I'm kind of in the same boat, but if it's a band that I truly love, then uh, I may do that. And uh, Garbage is one of my all-time favorite bands. That's autographed there. Um, and they've just launched some new music and have a new album coming out in two weeks and they've been doing some streams. So I, I may do that to jump on there. And then when they come around, absolutely try and go see them. Well, Gary, I know you've already done this with the Washington performing arts, but, uh, you know, looking ahead now that we can go out in person, would you live stream and what would you want to, to see? If so? Well, first of all, it doesn't, it, Ed's exactly right. It doesn't hold a candle to yeah. the in-person live experience. That said, it opens up other possibilities. And if you don't believe me, Go on to the Pussifer uh, website, P-U-S-C-I-F-E-R. You know we're all big Tool fans. This is a side project of Maynard. Um, and they have two live concerts, and they have massive production values. Um, you have to pay. And I paid for one of them, and, and you get it for like 48 hours. And it's awesome in a home theater. Um but on the other hand, uh, and Nick knows, all these guys know this because I told them today, we organized our, 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 our first for sure team meeting where we're all together in Ohio in September to coincide with a Nine Inch Nails live in-person concert that, that at least some of us I know are going to. Smith told me about it. I immediately bought tickets and then coordinated our team meeting so I could be there. And it's in Cleveland near the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So there you go. And, and that's my in September. I, I would pay to live stream a concert. Uh, I think something like Rammstein, something like that, where maybe I'd be too scared to go in person. Uh, you know, those are the kind of shows that I might be into. But, uh, you know, I, got, I have a home theater. And if I can't go to a place where my favorite band is playing, then I'll live stream it. And, you know, I agree with you guys completely. It's not the same vibe. But you can't always go to the places where your favorite bands are playing. So I'm going to be open-minded, give it a chance, and uh, still be going to live shows. Um, and that being said, I think the first live show I'll be going to is a band called Bad Fish, which is basically a sublime cover band, only because I have to take my 17-year-old there for his birthday and bring his friends, and it's this whole thing. But I'm just happy he's getting into live music. And It is kind of funny. The tribute bands are the first ones out there. I guess they're the ones most desperate or something because yeah. uh, it's all these tribute bands. Them. Yeah. This person, Travis, who asked um, who the um, for SBS in the Wild Winners, uh, let's do a social post. I'm sure you were planning to do this anyway. 
the, the first four ones that Nick showed were the four winners. Mm -hmm. And um, the prizes were full on SVS speakers and subwoofers, right, Nick? I mean, they were, yep. they were, they were, they were real, real prizes. We'll do, a, we'll do a post on all our different social and tell you guys who the winners were and what they won. Yep. Uh, there was Prime Wireless, Prime Bookshelf, SB1000 Pro, and, and I believe the last one was uh, an accessory. But uh, Vince has been work reaching out to all those people. We're going to try to get pictures. We always love when our winners send pictures, whether it's just still in the boxes when it arrives or after you have it set up. But uh, we'd love to do a slideshow of, uh, of the winners. And then, you know, same thing with uh, anyone who, who gets prizes here tonight. So uh, anyone else want to throw out who they're going to be seeing live before we move on into our lightning round here? Any uh, final? What, what about what about seeing SVS live? That's another thing we're talking about, right? We're, uh, uh, today, the team was talking about live events. We are, if these events happen, we're committed. Uh, the first one is um, a buying group event, so a very internal trade show event, but that's in August. And then we have committed to ourselves that we are going to do the Cedia Expo, which is in beautiful Indianapolis. Um, and we're going to do Rocky Mountain Audio Fest and we're going to, which is in Denver and we're going, to, which, and it's in October, right? Yep. And we're going to do um, Expona, which is another audio show, which is in the Chicago area. And I would think by that time, uh, by Labor Day, we're going to start doing more in-person SVS events with the full-on demos with me, Larry, and Nick. Um, and maybe Ed, if you want to come, if you want to tag along. That's a good point. You know, it, it, the whole first time we ever started doing live streams was, was from these dealer events. We would go to some of our uh, partners here around the country. We'd do the live stream, show off their showrooms. And so that's really what got us into doing this sort of live uh, virtual event. And uh, we look forward to doing that. But also, like you said at the top there, Gary, continuing to do the happy hours because, I mean, they're just so much fun. So why would we stop? Um, so with that being said, let's do one giveaway. And then I know the questions are stacking up. Eli's there uh, furrowing his brow as he's copying and pasting here. So <laughs> oh, I see. Like, Why am I doing questions this? here? This is great. Yeah, I know. They're, they're coming in fast and furious. So with that being said, uh, you know, in unison with our conversation about Dolby Atmos, our next giveaway is our Prime Elevation speakers, which have been called the best Atmos speakers in the world. And our winner of the Prime Elevation speakers is Mark Santora. Congratulations, Mark. Mark. You got some sweet surround door height effect speakers coming your way. And since we just gave away the prime elevation speakers, I think maybe I'll uh, make the first question relative to prime elevation. And uh, Gary, you don't want me to call out who should answer this? Or are you all just going to jump up at the same time? And, and I think we'll, we, yeah, first? I think right. let's have fun with this. So this one's going to be quick. For the SVS prime elevations, this comes from Mark B. When used as height speakers, does the orientation, parentheses, vertical or horizontal, make any difference? See, yes. this is what I was so when used, uh, yeah. so I, I'm trying to understand the question. So obviously, when they're horizontal angled down, or when they're you know on their horizontal axis, a vertical you know angled down or horizontal, and the okay. answer is yes, it does make a difference. But yeah, why? absolutely, it makes a difference, and I think, but it's completely rel uh, it's completely relative to where you hang them. So Larry, I think that was great. You were actually showing something that's important. If you if you could do that one more time, um, Larry has them as high as possible. Um, on the side wall, and you can see that he has them aiming down at the listening position. That's exactly right. If you, um, and obviously if it's a height effect, it, it, it needs to be above you in order to do its job. It could also be mounted like if you if you came over to my house, I would show you my height effects. They're on my ceiling, and and I have two pairs, and this was actually another question. I don't know if it was recorded, but I saw it flying by. If you have two pairs of height effect speakers, I would recommend towards the rear of the room aiming forwards to your listening position and the other pair towards the front of the room aiming rearwards to your listening position. They're a mirror image of each other, basically. Exactly. So that, that, I, that was actually another question. And are these speakers directional? The answer is they're somewhat directional. We don't, the way, one of the ways that speaker manufacturers create artificial directionality is they mess around with the frequency response to make it more beamy. We didn't want to do that. Instead, we made them as accurate as possible. So they are a wonderful full range speaker that sacrifices a little of the directionality, um, but makes them sound so much more convincing and immersive. So that's, that's what we did. Uh, it's always good to aim them towards your listening position. 
Right and I would I would say the the part about horizontal, if it's up near the ceiling, like Larry showed, you don't want to do that because you're going to get some bounce right off the ceiling That's and right. what's left of the sidewall. So uh, the horizontal configuration works best if it's actually being used more like a surround or surround back speaker. If it needs to be mounted low on at head level, then you could have it mounted sideways without any uh, you know ceiling diffraction issues. Okay, someone named Keith is asking, can you place them on top of your tower speakers? And what Keith is asking is, can they bounce off, can they aim upwards off of your tower speakers, bounce off of the ceiling and come back down to your ears? Well, that's exactly what we don't recommend. And, and, and I'm not trying to give Keith a hard time because Keith has been hearing about this approach from a bunch of other uh, speaker companies and the, the premise is that if you make the speaker super directional, and the, again, the way you do that is by crafting their frequency response, uh, uh, ba ma basically make their frequency response less accurate, roll off some of the bass, roll off some of the high frequencies so they're more beamy, then aim them up at the ceiling and the idea would be that they're gonna bounce down to your ears and it's gonna sound like the sound is coming from above you. Well, it's a nice thing to talk about. It makes it really easy to place them. The problem is it doesn't really work very well. And it also rolls off the sound so it's not as convincing and immersive. And, uh, and you know, how many people have a perfect ceiling where they would bounce down to your ears? Probably almost no one. But also, it's very you, you can't really beam the speakers straight up to the ceiling. There's also going to be plenty of sound coming at you right from the speaker to your ears. So prime elevation really was... Uh, Smith and me saying, this doesn't work well. Let's figure out a way to make a height effect speaker that really works well and aims down at your ears. That's what prime elevation is. Great points. Uh, so our next question comes from Dennis Rainey and uh, this is relative to SVS speakers, but I think it applies to really any speakers out there. He says, I have an ultra center and would like to know if I need to pair it with SVS speakers for the front in the fronts to get the best sound quality. Ed, I'm gonna throw this one to you. Well, the answer, short answer is yes. You, you do want timbre matching and tonality matching. If you have uh, uh, speakers with drastically different uh, tonal quality for the sides, you're just not going to get a good blend across the front stage when sound effects pan from left to center to right. So it's always best to have matching speakers on the front stage. That's a great point. That, that said, I, uh, one thing I always say, you know, and I, I first of all, I totally, totally agree with Ed, but I will say, that we worked so hard with our Prime and Ultra series to make them um, very Neutral. accurate and 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 not you know sort of like oh they're a really warm speaker oh they're a really bright speaker oh they're a really soft sounding speaker we tried really hard not to make them with a particular sound but just just as accurate as we possibly could make them for that reason they work better as a matchup to different brands than a lot of, of speakers would. And we always say that about prime elevation. I mean, why is prime elevation so popular? It's our most popular speaker. Well, the, the answer that maybe I should be upset about, but I'm not is prime elevation is matched up with lots of other brands of speakers. Yeah. And it does, it does a good job as, as would our ultra center. Uh, if if you didn't have SVS speakers, it would work. So would our Prime Center. Great insights. The uh, next question comes from Rob Zamiznik. Sorry if I mispronounced that. And uh, we're doing a subwoofer question. Uh, and he asked, which model subwoofers are known to work well with magna pans? And, and I should explain, those are electrostatic speakers. And Larry, maybe you can give a little insight into what an electrostatic... Actually, they're, they're not electrostatic. They're, they're magna planar speakers. Sl My bad. Uh, slightly dip. Not bad. No, you, you're, you're close to right, but not exactly right. But they're similar in, in terms of the technology that drives them. It's similar like film. They're, that, that's yeah. they're panel speakers, and they yep, use yeah. uh, they use an array of magnets with a sort of a cellophane looking thing to create their sound. Um, and um, I'm going to do the quickest answer first. And the quickest answer is the quickest subwoofer is the best because those kind of speakers are they're not very good at delivering deep bass. So they do really benefit from a subwoofer, but they will only benefit from a subwoofer that is really, really quick. So even among, I think SVS subwoofers in general are very quick, but I would not recommend one of our ported ones. I would say you absolutely with, with, um, 
Martin Logan, the sealed ones, uh, excuse me, the uh, uh, Martin Logan uh, electro, electrostatic speakers with um, quads, with magna planers. Um, you would want to use one of our sealed box subwoofers. And they will complete the picture because those speakers, even when they're massively big, generally don't have a ton of bass. Yep. Accur accuracy and transient response is the name of the game when you're yep. trying to match the subwoofer with, with those types of speakers. Yep. Uh, so Larry, I think this is a perfect one for you because you've done uh -oh. this a, a lot. Uh, and this comes from Jamie Dewberry. And it's sort of a general question, but I think you can give some good insights. Uh, Jamie asks, what is the best way to tune a system for an apartment so that it sounds good without blowing out your neighbors? <laughs> Well, tuning it, you know, it's going to come down to, you know, your receiver itself or amplifiers and stuff and kind of running off of what they do with their room corrections. So uh, as you guys know, we when we were doing these events around the country and stuff, we were setting up all these systems. And in some cases, we'd be in small rooms uh, with a smaller system. And one of the demos that we like to do is a Prime 5.1 setup with uh, the SB1000 and now the 1000 Pro. And those would normally be in smaller environments. So uh, I would run the room correction and try to do multiple listening positions and then adjust accordingly. But in an apartment where you're trying to not really upset your neighbors and stuff, um, you probably wouldn't be bumping up the output levels like a lot of people like to do. You'd probably maybe even pull them down just a little bit other than maybe your center channel. Uh, that way you you get the energy from what you're trying to listen to and you fill up your space, but without overpowering. And then uh, absolutely throw some sort of isolation on your uh, subwoofer with the isolation system that we've got so that you are a better neighbor with your subwoofer and you aren't disturbing everybody. And with the app, you can actually have uh, custom presets. So, you know, I'm sure there's a scale of when you're, uh, you're wanting to be more polite than when you're not, you know, if it's 1130 at night, maybe you have it dialed down a little bit more than if you're watching at 6 PM and, and your neighbors are out for dinner. So, you know, things like that can make, uh, you know, the adjustments and and uh, a little bit more friendly for uh, for roommates and neighbors and things yeah, like that. A lot of our owners do use uh, what they call late night mode where they dial the sub back four or five, even six dB. And they you can still hear the bass, but it's just not as intrusive. And it's, it's a great tool for late night listening and not bothering your uh, neighbors. Yeah, that's totally one of the presets that we use. We have a movie preset that's just stupid loud, a TV preset that's more subdued that we use most of the time. And then nighttime is off. All right, another subwoofer question from Brett C. And Ed, I'm going to throw this one to you. How can I connect an SB2000 to an amplifier that does not have a sub out? Well, I'm going to assume here that this is would be an integrated amplifier that has some type of line level pre-out. So it, it, if it's got line level outs for left and right, you would connect both of those to the subwoofer, obviously, to capture both channels. And ostensibly, those would be a full range signal. So you'd have to turn the low pass filter on at the subwoofer to filter out uh, the mids and highs. So that, that's the most common way to connect like a two channel integrated or a two channel preamp uh, to the subwoofer. Great advice, rapid fire here. Next Real one simple, is yeah. from Mark and Liz Lambert. That sounds like a couple here. Uh, it says, he says, or she, they say, I want to go dual, but if the subwoofer matching tool, which is on our site, recommends the SB2000, would dual SB1000s be equivalent or should I go dual SB2000s? And I feel like this is an it depends answer, but uh, I don't know, Ed, you want to start us off with this one? Well, it does. I think the important thing to lead with is the subwoofer matching tool is a great starting point. It's a great recommendation, but it doesn't mean you can't drop down or go up a level depending on your room and application and playback level and other circumstances. So uh, don't be afraid to drop to the S a pair of SB1000s is a, is a fantastic experience. Uh, and, and I probably would take them over a single SB2000, but looking at the question, this individual is looking at going you know, duels down the road. Uh, anyways, are we talking about 1000s or 1000 pros? Cause I think that's, I mean, if you're talking pros. about, yeah, because if you're talking about 2000 pros versus 1000 pros, I think at this point, um, SVS, every subwoofer in our range represents the peak of our technology. I mean, I, I really believe that 1000 pro has a reference amplifier platform, a beautifully optimized driver. We now have the, in the PV, 1000 Pro, we have the dual ports. Um, and th the short answer is dual SB1000 Pros or dual, dual PB1000 Pros, I'm going to say in pretty much every case going to be better than a single 
uh, um, SB2000 yeah. Pro or corresponding PD2000 Pro. They're, they're great. They do everything well. I, I'm, I'm having so much, you know, we've gotten a lot of fuss about 3000 micro and it's it, because it's a really great story to tell. It's a really tiny subwoofer and just sounds so amazing. But, you know, we quietly launched 1000 Pro and that's really, and Larry, you were just saying that today on our team call, that has completely, you know, taken over a lot of people. It's such yeah. a capable subwoofer. It is. It's such a cool piece. And to see the response to the series as a whole, but also the ported model in the 1000 Pro has been insane because it's it's at price points, performance stories, frequency levels that you don't see in the 599 realm. And it's just a killer sub. It's so much fun to play with. So uh, we're going to go back to Atmos here. And Larry, I'm going to throw this one to you because I know you love talking about Atmos. And this comes from my favorite username of the night, Liquid Panther. And Liquid <laughs> yeah. Panther asks, what is the best configuration for a four-speaker Atmos system? Top front and top rear? Top oh, I just front, did that. Middle. We just answered that. Um, that was did the one that we were talking about what, what we did on the four, where you go the four speakers. Okay. Well, my I think he's talking here. about the configuration of the AV receiver, right? The, yeah. Uh, what, well, what to and, choose? Oh, okay. I, I'm sorry. I didn't think of it from that place. Yeah, Larry yeah. could do that, or Ed it's, could. Yeah. So I like if I'm doing a single, I I tend to do middle. Uh, I do top middle if I'm doing a single pair. But if I'm doing doubles, I I I think this is really dependent on your room and a personal preference. But I I do tend to do um, a a middle and a rear in that case. But other people might choose to do a middle and a front or a front and a rear. So it's really going to so come I down to your rear. rear. Yeah. But you know, yeah, I also think too. it depends on the brand. And so yeah. one thing I would say, this is a great reason to pick up the phone and call us because this is what Ed and his team do 24 seven day in and day out. They know all the brands of all this uh, AV receivers and the preamp processors. And so um, I would call if you have any doubt about the optimal way to configure yeah. it. I have a, a, a right now I'm using, I've used pretty much every brand at this point. I've, um, I'm using a top of the line Denon receiver right now in my, my theater. And I prefer um, two front and two rear aiming towards the listening position. But everybody, every, you know, different brands are different and different rooms are different. Yeah. My, my and system's configured that way also. Uh, uh, mine's top, top front and top rear. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to, you know, there's other configurations in the AV processor that might not result in as optimal uh, of sound delivery. So like, like Gary said, we would look up the specifics of it, see what options are offered, and then tell you the best uh, configuration for yeah. uh, your room. It's There's a little weird that it's so confusing, but yeah. it's good because it gives Ed and his team something to do. Yeah. <laughs> and depending on the brand of your receiver, you may not even have a middle option. So it may just right. be front and rear. So that's it's all really dependent on a lot of different factors. So, Gary, we have a, a philosophical question for you here from uh, Ryan <laughs> Robinson. Uh, maybe it's not philosophical, but it speaks to our philosophy at SVS. What was the inspiration that caused SVS to branch out into speaker design and creation and not just stick out with subs? Um, I mean, we always have done what we do because we're passionate about great sound. And, and we've always done, uh, in terms of our products, if, it, if there's no need for it, we won't do it. I've been asked to do products. I could name the categories and I'm like, why do you need SBS for that? There's one out there, it, it's perfectly good. Um, you don't need us for that. We felt there was a need for high performing uh, reference level of performance in speakers that was within reach of normal people. And um, we had some just awesome, I still have awesome, um, speaker designers who were excited to do it. Uh, and, um, you know, it's worked out really, really well. Um, I'm almost, I was gonna bring it up today. I brought it up to the team today. I'm almost to my 10 year anniversary. It'll be in a couple weeks. So maybe we'll be together on that day depending on when it, when it is. Um, when we started 10 years ago, uh, this team, although Ed was here before me, um, we definitely transformed things together, right, Ed? We sure um, did. We didn't, we didn't, um, have speakers, but we saw a huge need for speakers and we brought in some really state-of-the-art speaker designers. We didn't use subwoofer. One of the big mistakes subwoofer companies do is bring, they think they know everything. And so they use their subwoofer designers to design speakers. 
We didn't do that. We brought in some of the top speaker minds in the world, and um, it worked out really, really well. Uh, we're, you know, one of the top five search for speakers in the world now. And we listen, we have not stopped. We're, um, I'm really excited about what's on the horizon with speakers. We're working a lot on that. So stay tuned. Don't say, yeah, that was going to cut you off there, Gary. I, I know. Like to, uh, <laughs> Nick is going to kick me off the call. Float, float out. Uh, oh, he got show. muted. How did that happen? Your audio cut out, Gary. Oops, sorry. <laughs> uh, but I think we're due for another giveaway. And then, uh, Ed, I got a, a good question for you here that uh, okay. actually is germane because I was just playing around with this today. But uh, the next prize we're giving away is uh, one that we've been talking about today. Larry, you specifically, the PB1000 Pro Subwoofer, which has quickly become one of our most popular products. And the winner of this beast of a subwoofer is Kevin Breeze. Kevin Breeze, congratulations. You get a PB1000 awesome. Pro. Congratulations, Kevin. Way. Fun times for you ahead. So, Ed, this question comes from Chris Alquist. And I was actually doing this today uh, while Eli was shooting video. And Chris Alquist asks, when doing the subwoofer crawl, which I think you should explain what that is, uh, the subwoofer should be placed in the listening position. Does it matter if it's on the elevation of the listener's ears or can it be placed on the floor? Well, I, ideally, you want it at the listener's head elevation because there is a floor-to-ceiling standing wave pattern that develops, and you would take that into account. Ed, why don't you explain what, it, explain what it is because not everyone knows. So the subwoofer crawl is you put the subwoofer at the primary listening position, and then you crawl around the room, uh, hence the term, with your head down near the floor where the subwoofer would be, and you listen for the best bass. When you find the location where it sounds the best, you put the subwoofer there because the room acoustics are reciprocal in that sense. So the question here is when I put the subwoofer at the listening position, can I leave it at the floor or should I put it up near head level? Ideally you want it at head level. Most people can't accomplish that. So they just plop it on the, uh, on the seat or the couch. And I would call that good enough in most if cases. If you need to do the subwoofer call, I would suggest call Ed and ask him to come over and hold the subwoofer at your level. That's what I was just about to say. Yeah, get him buddy to hold that. it's a PB16 Ultra. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he loves that kind of thing. He does house Get your Hulkbuster out. out. Yeah, yeah, Hulkbuster will hold it up for us. Uh, so the next question comes from uh, Dan Christosek. And uh, this one I think can be generalized, uh, you know, without the brand. But it's basically, is my Emotiva XPA amp too much power at 300 watts for the SVS Prime Tower. And Larry, just, think, and Gary, Gary, we just answered this one the other day for uh, yep, someone. Yep, we, well, we do it. One, you can ask us these questions one-on-one. -on -one. Ed and I are on, all on the case, right? So, But the question is essentially, is it possible to overpower your speakers? And, uh, you know, I'll throw this one out to whoever wants to answer it, Larry. I, I think, think Ed, Ed has a really good answer yeah. for this, and then you can pass it to Larry or, or whomever. But Ed's answer is the right answer. You know, an underpowered amplifier is actually more dangerous than uh, a, a powerful one because the tendency is to drive it loud enough to drive it into clipping, and and clipping means it's square waving the signal. That's very dangerous uh, uh, to the speakers, especially the tweeter. It can burn it out quickly. Um, so when you lash a, a very powerful amplifier to the system, you're not necessarily playing it louder than you normally would. Um, so what is the real benefit? The benefit is that the amplifier is not being driven into clipping at your normal playback level. So it can hit those transients very cleanly. It always sounds very authoritative and dynamic and unstressed. And that sounds great. And it's not going to damage the speakers at all. So I would say you're, you're totally fine uh, with, with, that, with that amplifier and the prime towers. So, Absolutely. and I'd like to just, Larry, did you want to say something? Cause I know you're no, I was going to say it's right on. Cause you're, you're not going to be, you know, trying to clip a 300 per channel amplifier either. So, right. Why would you, you, you play yeah. your system at the same level you always would. You just have cleaner and more dynamic headroom. And let me, and, and what he, what you mean by that, I'm going to expand on that just slightly. I have a 300 watt per channel Mark Levinson amplifier. It's a beast. It, it, um, uh, is, totally effortless. Uh, I've used it with ultra towers, prime towers, and prime pinnacle, um, and ultra bookshelves actually at different times. And uh, when musical peaks happen, it can rise effortlessly to deliver that and it will not damage the speaker because there's because there's zero distortion. Right. If I had a cheap, uh, you know, 75 watt uh, uh, I don't want to say cheap, a low, low quality 75 watt or 50 watt amplifier 
and I tried to do that, it would distort. And the distortion is like a squaring off of the sound wave, which is like, imagine a kind of grabbing your tweeter diaphragm. That's the part that moves and sort of jarring it. And that's what, that's what blows speakers. But I will say, Ed, and you, you can disagree with me. Um, you, you, you've been doing this. Well, actually, I think I've been doing it longer than you, but you, I'll let you disagree with me anyway, <laughs> is sometimes <laughs> if, you're, if you're having a party or you're just doing something where it's literally three hours at top volume, the voice coil is moving at top volume, especially with, with like something like techno, hip hop, the voice coil is moving at top volume for such an extended period of time, it can generate heat and damage the speaker. So the best way to avoid that is give your speaker a, and I'm not talking about SVS, any speaker, when the voice coil is vibrating at top volume for an extended period of time, give your speaker a five minute break to cool off. Turn it down for five minutes every half hour or so. And I'm not talking about any brand and uh, the voice coil will cool down and then you can go back up to your hip hop at whatever level you want or techno or any music that has extended the same high volume all the time. Ed, want to dispute that or do you agree with no, that? No, it's a hundred percent true. If, if you're just like constantly cranking music at super loud levels, even if it's clean, you could build up a, a high thermal load on the voice coil and potentially damage it. So, uh, you know, ham fisted users of, 300 500 watt amp sure you could toast the speaker but under normal conditions you wouldn't uh and it's good advice you know turn the system down to a more moderate playback level give the speakers a chance to uh recover and i'm only talking about like top volume i'm not talking about you know a normal home theater experience where you're right. jamming and you're having a great time i'm not telling you not to have fun have all the fun in the world but when it's just like mega disco level volume over and over again then just give it a little break every half hour and you won't have a problem Yep. Wonder how many people oh, and we're actually have been to a disco before. Too. That'd be, uh, <laughs> good to know. Comment if you've been to a disco. Uh, next question: we have Is there is, no more discos? What are they? There's clubs. Was that like when I when I said listen to AM ra and FM radio and you said what's that? It, does, yeah. it doesn't exist anymore. We'll, right, we'll throw right. disco into that into that category. You don't judge. Oh, Nick, I don't need any help feeling like an old man. It's, it's really <laughs> easy for me. You know what it's I like learned? Falling off a log for me to feel. You know, like know an what old I learned? Man. The term for my generation is now being called geriatric millennial. I'm a geriatric <laughs> millennial, so that, that's us. Awesome. That, that, that hit me right right here. So and I'm a yeah. I'm a youthful boomer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. See, which, what sounds worse? Uh, but anyway, I think they they both sound worse pretty than X. So I'm a millennial and a geriatric. What's worse than that? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. We Somebody said Thermal ages, Load's a great all, new band name. Yeah, there you go. Uh, all right, Larry, I thought this one's perfect for you. Uh, Dan OS asks, is there such thing as too much subwoofer for a room? Never. And what does that sound yes, like? Yes, there <laughs> totally can Never. be. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, there, there absolutely can be because it can be unbearable to be in a room if you've got just too much in there. And what you'd end up doing is sacrificing the subwoofer itself by having to dial it back quite a bit. But also... Um, it can also take on the space at lower volume levels, um, give you more capabilities too. But you know, we, we will never let you overdo it if you contact our sound experts team. We will walk you through uh, what your speakers are connecting them to, find out about your room, and we won't over recommend. We will. And, you know, duels are way better than a single. Yeah. Everybody knows that. Uh, I would say you reach a point of diminishing returns, anything over four. You know, some people yeah. will put a, a subwoofer in each corner. You get very uniform distribution of the bass. Anything beyond that's kind of crazy. And and honestly, duels will give you ninety percent of that experience anyway. So yep. uh, I, I think duels really hits the sweet spot uh, when you're talking about uh, multiple subs. So on that note, this kind of brings two of our previous questions together. Nicholas Dunn asks, "Does the subwoofer crawl work with multiple subwoofers?" Ed, no. With multiple subwoofers, generally what we do is is we look at a plan view of the room and recommend some placement options. And then we start phasing the subwoofers. So they uh, are, are in tandem with each other and in phase with each other and not fighting. Um, so it's a little bit of a different approach than uh, well, with a can, single Can you sub. say one thing though? If you have dual or multiple subwoofers, the need for the subwoofer crawl goes down dramatically. Sure like you don't really need it anymore. 
Right. That that's why we look at placement and phasing instead of instead of starting with the subwoofer crawl. We we really don't do that with duels. And when yeah. Ed is talking about placement and phasing, he's saying we'll help you with that. Sure I don't want will. people to feel like but I what I have found is once you go to two subwoofers, you've solved eighty percent of the room problems in the room. So yep. You know, you, you're you're probably not going to need to obsess about that too much. It's a great point. Uh, so, Gary, I thought this was a, a good one for you. Uh, Chibo seventy three asks if speakers are capable. At what point should you consider by amping them? Or maybe that's an Ed question. Okay, so by amping is is a thing that is uh, you know it's it's a little bit of a luxury. You need to have two of the same stereo amp as opposed to one stereo amp. This is different than by wiring, which is running two sets of wires and decoupling the top and the bottom. And for those of you who don't know what by amping means, if you look on the back of your speakers and you see two pairs of inputs instead of one pair of inputs, that means they're probably by ampable, which means they probably have a, a bridge or some kind of wire connecting the two pairs of inputs. You can separate them. And then if you have identical amplifiers with identical, best case would be the exact identi identical pair of amplifiers, then you can drive the, the higher frequencies and mid range with one of the amplifiers and the bass with the other. And there's a general sense that the speaker opens up, becomes more effortless. Maybe it's gonna image a little bit better. Um, I'm trying to remember what the person was asking. Is he asking what the benefit is or? or uh, he's at what point does it benefit you, the speaker or your experience to actually do it? Like at what point should you say now, you know, this is worth it versus, you know, just wiring them normally? I mean, I personally, you know, I've done by amping and I've done by wiring and I've done what I have right now, which is just a totally kick a asterisk, asterisk amp. Um, and I prefer the latter. I, I just have, I just get a single best amp that I have in my budget. In this case, the budget you know, was 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 kind of high, and and I got a really really high performance amplifier. I can't imagine replacing that with two amplifiers and improving the performance. No, you 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 wouldn't be able to. I think the real benefit for most users, if they have an AV receiver that has a spare amp channel and can buy amp, you're just doubling the power going to the speaker, and then you're going to get the same benefit a more effortless presentation, more dynamic headroom. Uh, and that's really the the primary benefit here. Or as Gary says, you could just step up to a single more powerful amplifier and have the same effect. Good insights. Uh, Janine Taylor. Asked, I mean, this is, a, you know, this, this kind of, I'm sorry, but it, it does inspire me to say, even for us, Ed and I have been doing this forever. Larry's been doing this forever. And even for us, it's still a journey. It's still fun trying different things, trying by amping, trying. Uh, uh, I mean, I just had the greatest fun experience that I've had in a long time, just um, adding a new cartridge and um, a new power supply to my turntable and, and hearing the differences and it, it's fun. And you, you don't have to do it with super high end stuff, but, but it, you know, you were blessed with the best measuring instrument that there is for sound, which is your two ears. Play with them, have fun with it. That's a great point. Um, I mean, we're running low on time. Uh, we, we, we have time for one more question. You guys want to pick one out of here? I feel can, like can I, I ask this. also in the comments before we go to the last um, uh, question, tell us in your comments, should we keep doing this lightning round thing? I, 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 if you guys are having as much fun as I am, and I think Larry and Nick and, and Ed are, we'll do this again. I mean, I, I can tell that there's there's so many questions we didn't get to answer. We're going to have to go through. And we always say, you know, we're going to pick uh, some of them and we generally do. But I, I like this rapid fire approach. The lightning yeah. round certainly gives us a little bit more to, you know, leeway to bounce around and cover as much as we possibly can. And just everyone's alone, saying yes. Yeah. Everyone yeah. just asking about by wiring and, and by amping alone. You know, there's a lot of ground we could even cover there. Um, so I think this is a, a good one about... Uh, dual subwoofers, and Michael Jager asked, is there a way to equate two smaller subwoofers to one larger sub? For example, two 1000 Pros are equal to the output of a 2000 Pro or a 3000. You know, is there a, sort of a, an algorithm that allows you to determine, uh, you know, what the output is gonna be in the low frequency extension, anything to that effect? Well, the X Ed factor, I'll let Ed, Ed can answer this, and yeah. there are there are numbers, but the, but the X factor is the room. So, you know, if you have a single, we could tell you the math of it if they were outside on your backyard, 
the math of it, there is a map to it, and we could tell you that. But the reality is the room is such an X factor that two is always going to trump one no matter what the math says. Ed, want to disagree with me? No, I, I agree. If if anybody has a specific question about two models, they can reach out to our team of sound experts. We do have the numbers. We can run them for you. Um, but, you know, as, as Gary states, uh, uh, I, I like duels over a single anytime. Uh, and, and I'll I'll take the, you know, two. And you're not saying to spend more money just to just to stress. You're not saying to spend more money. You're saying. You it's know, just a better experience. Yeah. Me, but you but you you might tell somebody. I would prefer to see you get two SB1000 Pros than a single uh, uh, PB3000 or SB3000. You might say that because of the room and the, the ability. And now that the technologies are so aligned, it's, um, it, it, it's you know, unless the room is absolutely just problem free, that's good advice. Would you agree? Right. Yep, absolutely. It, it's, it's very much application specific. So we look at the room, we look at the layout, we look at available uh, floor space, and we make the best recommendation. But, uh, you know, duels is really, you know, you can't lose uh, when you're going duels. And I so, get notes from customers all the time telling me Ed's team told them to get something less expensive than they were asking about. Um, and that's really a thing with us. We don't tell people to spend more money than they need to to accomplish what they're trying to accomplish. So last question before we get to our final giveaway. This one comes from AJLG, and uh, they asked. No, oh, I saw it, and the answer is no. <laughs> All right, never mind. What, what? I'm sorry, what is it? What is it? AJ <laughs> wanted uh, Ed and I to shave our heads and our beards so we look like you. <laughs> well, they won't that look like right me. They'll, That's they'll, not You know happen. they'll be much yeah. better looking than me. Well, well, I, I, think he's, in there. I think he's goofing on me. I think Gary should grow a beard. Mm, you might something. you might change your oh, mind if I, I my wife I is did yelling. That. I can hear her yelling across the hall through the doors. No, really, really loud. So I was uh, doing stubble beards, and my wife totally vetoed it. She's like, "I'm sick of the stubble beard." You look. I like just a took like two inches off of this thing too, and you know, well, I'm I have a misshapen head. So Gary, I thought smooth. it was a good look on you personally, but mm. I, got, I guess I got vetoed by. I guess, the, I guess it's more important for me to appeal to my wife. It sure is. <laughs> I've been giving too much glare. Nobody be able to look at the screen. So uh, yeah, we'll pass on that one. Hard pass. Sorry, LG TJ or whatever. Uh, we do right, one more. We out of time. <laughs> I think uh, we're, we're out of we're, time. We're wrapping up here. Uh, we're in the bonus so final, round. Final we have one giveaway, giveaway right? Our SB two thousand Pro subwoofer, and the person who's going to be bringing that home is Alan Marshall. Congratulations, Alan. Congratulations, Alan. Congratulations, Alan. Congratulations, Congratulations sir. We'll take care of you. And thank you, everybody, for all these awesome questions. I think it's uh, pretty much locked in cement that we are going to be bringing the lightning round back. The next happy hour we have on the schedule will be Thursday, June 10th. Uh, we're working on a special guest from the world of pro audio. Seems like there's a lot of interest in Atmos and spatial audio. So hopefully we'll be able to integrate somebody with some expertise in that field to, to share some of their knowledge. So join us on June 10th, same time, same place. Uh, and we appreciate you guys as always joining. And uh, thanks for the time tonight. We will catch you down the road. Thanks, everybody. Thank